What if I told you that I had a tool that would help you become a better programmer? Would you be interested in that? Of course you would. Not only will this tool help you become a better programmer, but it'll also help you organize your thoughts and become a better learner. If this sounds good, stick around and I'll tell you all about it right after this. Hello there, my name is Dan Vega and on this channel you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials related to software development. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing and as always, anything that we mention will be listed in the description below. With that, let's jump into today's tutorial. Today we're going to talk about mind mapping. Mind mapping is a method that you can use to collect your thoughts in a way that promotes and stimulates learning. What we're going to do is jump right into a mind map that I created when I wanted to produce this video that taught the advantages of mind mapping for programmers. So with that, let's jump into it and have a little fun. So here we are inside of the mind map that I created to produce this video. We'll get to different types of software that you can use to create these mind maps, but let's focus less on that right now and more on the mind map itself. So here I can go and zoom into here and a mind map starts with a central idea, question or thought. So again, when creating this video, uh, my thought was mind mapping for programmers. So how could we help programmers learn with the idea of a mind map? So the first thing that I did was I thought about all right, I need a video title for this. So I create a branch, and again, we'll get into the structure of a mind map in a, in a little bit here. But I created a branch, and I used one word or phrases that kind of described what this video was going to do. So we want to talk about mind mapping. We want to stress about the importance of it for programmers, software developers, how we could become a better learner. And from that, that's how I derived the title of this video. So then we get into advantages of mind mapping. And I want to be sure that I stress to you what are the advantages that we can take from producing mind maps. So first off, it makes learning fun. If you're, if you're doing something that's fun, you're more likely to keep doing it. If, if this task is not fun or you're just not interested in it, then you're not going to use it. So at least for me, mind mapping has become fun. So it's something that I'll continue to keep doing. It's just a smarter way of note taking. So we get into this idea of transcribing content to learn something. If you've ever been in a lecture or a presentation and you've just sat there and blindly documented what somebody else was saying, you're not going to really learn about that. If you if you have some notes from a conference that you were at last year where you just sat there and, you know, took a, a full page of notes. If you go back and look at that piece of paper or that note inside of your computer, you're probably going to have to read the entire thing again to understand what the heck you were talking about or what the person who gave the lecture was talking about. And so transcribing content doesn't really promote learning the way that a mind map can. A mind map helps you organize content the way your brain sees it. So the way that you see something is going to be very different from the way that I see something. But when I look at this mind map for this video now, it's very clear to me how I organized this content. So that really gets into uh, thinking versus blindly documenta uh, documenting something. It allows for an easy explanation. I have a bit of a presentation here on what I wanted to cover in this video. And this is easy for me to go through and explain because I have keywords and simple phrases that allow me to kind of just talk about what specific topic I want to cover. Um, it gives you just what you care about. There's Again, there's not a whole lot of extra fluff involved here. We're just talking about what the things that we care about. And this has been proven to be an effective tool for both learning and teaching. So now that we kind of know what the advantages of mind mapping are, how do we mind map? 
So the first thing that you should do if you've never created a mind map before is to start with a piece of paper. It can be, uh, if you have paper with no lines, that's probably best. But if it has lines, that's fine as well. But you really want to start with paper before you move into kind of making things more complex. Um, from a programming standpoint, it's kind of like creating a wireframe. It, the thoughts in your head, if you can just put them down on paper in a wireframe, then you take away the complexity of making, in, making everything so neat and perfect. And I think it's similar with a, a mind map. Like, I just want to get some thoughts on a paper. I don't want to really worry about colors and um, how it looks, but we'll get into that. You can use colors. So we're going to start with a piece of paper. And again, you want a single topic in the center. This is a topic or a question that you're trying to solve uh, or just a thought. So we're going to start with that. One thing that you can really do is use images if possible. I didn't put a lot of images in this one because I wanted to keep it a, a little bit uh, on the side of simple. But um, whether you're drawing on paper or you're using software like this that allows you to use images, if you can, use images because the brain can kind of see images like this and retain that information. So images will help with that. Then what we do is we create ideas and thoughts into branches. So you'll see a bunch of branches here in this mind map that go off of the central idea. So we've talked about those branches already. First, I wanted to talk about what the video title was going to be. Then I wanted to group some thoughts about what the advantages of mind mapping were. And now we're into how to mind map. So these are the branches that go off of my central thought. You could have one, you could have many. Again, it's really how your brain wants to organize the content. Colors really begin to help. Even, uh, as I just said, start with a piece of paper. Don't introduce colors right away. But if you have colored pencils or pens, after you've done a couple, colors will help you kind of organize your content out. You want to use words or phrases. You don't want to use long sentences or paragraphs. That will defeat the purpose of this. So you are just using words or phrases that really kind of help you explain your thought. Uh, in some software like this one, you could add comments to it if you need to come back and think about it. But, you know, I, I don't, I'm not reading off of something. I just have all of these thoughts here and I'm just kind of explaining these thoughts out. So words or phrases that are gonna really help you remember the point or topic of what, you're wanna, what you wanna talk about. And then connections. So we have all of these different connections and branches and how you can go off. And this really helps to build out your entire thought on your topic. So now that we know the advantages and how to mind map, Let's go into what to mind map. Like, all right, we know how to kind of create a mind map, but what are some of the things that we can mind map? So I'll start with reading a new book. I really enjoy reading books, but I've always uh, kind of taken notes in books. I, might, I may use a highlighter in a book and highlight certain things, but that doesn't really help because then you got to come back and look at all your highlighted stuff. And you could take notes, but then you're not really, you know, keeping yourself into that book. You know, you don't want to spend time transcribing stuff, especially when you're reading a book that's going to take you off your path. So when I'm reading a new book, I may have a mind map for both notes and quotes. Uh, you could break this down into just those two kind of branches. You could break um, a chapter out for every, uh, for every chapter in the book. You can create a branch and then just create you know, three to five topics that you learned about in that particular chapter. If there's a particular quote in the book that I definitely want to remember, I'll create a branch just for quotes in that book. And this really helps me go back and look at a chapter of a book and, rem and remember that, oh yeah, I learned about X, Y, and Z. So reading a new book is something that you can really start with right away. And this helps with any types of book, especially 
um, computer books. If we're trying to uh, learn a new language or learn a new framework, this helps you retain that information that you're learning along the way. Another great thing to mind map is presentations. So if you go to a conference or a meetup or even used for online courses, mind mapping is a great way to, to retain that information. So the next time you go to a conference, instead of using your laptop and just transcribing you know paragraphs of notes throughout the conf throughout the um, either conference or presentation try using a mind map start with a central topic what is the title of that person's presentation use that in the center and start to create your branches and create thoughts off of those branches the great thing about presentations is the presenter has usually done the upwork uh, the upfront work for you they have some type of structure to their presentation. You can use that structure to drive your mind map. So that's really good. An article. So if you're working on an article, whether it's for school, for work, or maybe a blog post that you're working on, this is a great way to collect your thoughts on what you want to make sure that you cover in that article. I use it for podcasting. Whether you're a podcast creator or you're consuming a podcast. Again, I enjoy certain podcasts, and if I want to make sure that I'm uh, taking notes on that, instead of just um, scribbling something in a notebook, I'll create a um, mind map for that particular podcast. You could do it for that episode, or you could do it for the entire podcast itself, and then off of there, create a branch just for that episode and, you know, the two to three to five things that you learned in that episode. Uh, question to brainstorm. Maybe you have a question. How does X work? So if how does X work, you can start creating a mind map on how you're going to solve this question. So that's something else I do as well. And then learning something new. And this is really important for programmers because we are constantly trying to keep up with new things that are coming out and uh, keep up with the languages that we're already using. So when you're learning something new, like a new framework, a new programming language, or a new version of the software that you use. This is a great chance to use mind mapping. You start with the central um, idea. In this case, let's say that we were learning what's new in Java 9. We can create branches for all the main features that came out in Java 9. And then from those branches, we can go ahead and create connections that kind of talk about the different features of that feature. So again, for learning something new, mind mapping is really great. So now that we know what to mind map, how can we do it? What are some tools that we can use to take advantage of this? Well, let's talk about paper. Uh, as far as paper goes, I said earlier that no lines is best, but if you have lines, great, uh, it'll work still. But again, size kind of matters in your paper depending on what your thought is going to be about. If your thought is just about a single question that you know is pretty small, then you can get away with doing something in a notebook. If you're uh, mind mapping um, every single feature in the Java programming language, you might need some bigger paper for that. So just think about that before you create your initial uh, central topic. If you're using paper, again, colored pens or pencils work very well because they just help the brain kind of think and branch off of that central topic. And I use uh, these Code and Quill notebooks This that I have. Uh, I have three of them, actually. They're really nice. Um, I'm not an affiliate in any way for them, but I just really like their notebooks. So if you like, go ahead and check them out. So software. Uh, I'm using Coggle. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I use Coggle, but these are actually links. So if you wanted to click through and check them out, there's also software called MindMup and MindMeister. Uh, I haven't actually used the other two. Um, I used one a, a while ago, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, and I really started to like Coggle, so I've been using that a lot more lately. So let's jump into why Coggle. Again, I'm not an affiliate for them. I just happen to really like the software, so I'm kind of promoting it. 
First, it's free to get started. You can create up to three mind maps. So right away, you can jump in and start creating them with no cost. I think I paid $50 for a year so I can create as many as I want. And what I really like is there's a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. And if you come down here, that'll show you all of the keyboard shortcuts. So you don't need to use your mouse really to kind of jump around and start creating all of these branches. And that helps you quickly put your thoughts down and get them organized. Uh, simple and elegant design. I really like how this is and how I can take a look at this and kind of zoom in and out and move around and do things like that. Uh, the colors, links, and images. Again, when you highlight something, you can add an image, you can add a link. Uh, comments. So if you come into comments, there's one comment here. We can see comments about that. Markdown support. Uh, collaboration. I can invite someone to work on this mind map with me. Um, I can also share it with you guys. So I am going to link to this um, uh, mind map below. So if you're in the description, go ahead and click it. You can go ahead and check that out. Um, you can also make it available for download as like an image or a PDF. And they do have mobile apps for Coggles. So if you're on your phone, you can go ahead and check out a mind map. So that's my kind of overview on mind maps and why I think they're beneficial and how easy they are to get started with. So let's talk about what's next. If you go ahead and over to YouTube and just kind of search TED Talks on mind mapping, there are a few really good ones that I would suggest watching. Um, I'll try to link to those below as well. And the easiest thing to do is just start mind mapping. Like again, you don't need fancy software to do this. Just take a piece of paper, put a thought down in the middle and start going off and branching. Again, especially on paper, using just key phrases or words. Uh, no sentences, no paragraph, just your thoughts on what you want to try and retain or teach. And again, what's next? I teach someone else and that's what I'm doing here. I, I love mind mapping so much. I think it's a really effective tool for both learning and teaching. So that's why I'm producing this video, just to kind of teach you about mind mapping. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation here on mind mapping. I hope you get started if you want to, and you use something like Colgo, uh, share your mind maps with me. I, I'm interested in seeing them. I'm learning from watching what other people do as well with their mind maps. So that's been a lot of fun. And if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, that really helps me out, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.